Hey guys, this is Saman here from Explore Gadgets, and these are some of the games I play on my Galaxy Note 7. Do note that the games I play are my personal preference and may be old. So without any further ado, let's get started. Starting off with some of my favorite games. First we have Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. The story of Brothers follows the journey of two siblings trying to save their dying father. The story is so good that it hits you on an emotional and a personal level. Much of Brothers charm lies in its non-verbal storytelling. The characters speak in an incomprehensible language and it is up to you to understand and interact with the gorgeous environment. The graphics are great showing dreamlike locations and for the controls you get two joysticks with which you can control the two brothers to overcome obstacles. Next, we have Deus Ex Go. Deus Ex Go is a turn-based strategy game where you carefully sneak behind some guards and plung your razor-sharp elbow blades into enemies. Each enemy in the game has a unique behavior and you will have to play accordingly to win. Overall, it is a very good strategy game. Next is CSR Racing 2. Probably one of the best drag racing games out there for smartphones, this game is graphically intensive and very addicting. For those of you who love drag racing, this game is a must play. And playing this has never been more fun on the Note 7 because of its quick loading times and lag free experience. And now for some games that I like to play with my S Pen. First, Magic Touch. This game requires you to draw certain patterns or shapes so that the wizard produces a spell that pops the balloon of the enemy and destroying it. As this game does require a little precision, doing it with your fingers can be a little hard. But with the S Pen and the big screen of the Note 7, you can play this game with ease. But it still is a little challenging and very addicting. Next up is Scribble Racer. Again, the S Pen comes in very handy while playing this game, as it requires you to continuously touch the screen and navigate your line without touching the sides or obstacles. Because of the thin S Pen, you can quickly and precisely navigate the line. Next we have Trap. Trap is actually a very old game that I used to play on my Note 1, but it still is very fun and very hard. You draw a line and trap the bouncing balls and if you occupy over 75% you will win. However there are a lot of balls and it is very hard to keep track of them all so you will need a lot of precision to trap them. And as I have mentioned earlier the S Pen helps a lot. Next we have World of Goo. In World of Goo. In World of Goo, you will need to make structures so that the round goo with eyes like creatures can flow through them and go into a pipe, clearing the level. The S Pen helps here in making the structures more ergonomic so that the structure stands when transporting the goo. All in all, it is a very fun game to play. Next we have Brain Dots. This is a game that I like to play to challenge myself at times. What you basically do in this game is draw something so that the two balls touch each other. And when you have to draw something, it will obviously be better with the S Pen than your hand, so the S Pen again comes in handy. Now for some normal games that I play. First, Assassin's Creed Identity. Assassin's Creed Identity is probably one of the most graphically intensive games on Android. 7 runs this very nicely with minimal lags. This game has the same type of gameplay like the console and PC version, and even the visuals are almost on par with it.
Next is Badlands 2. This is one of the best looking games you're ever going to stick to your phone. Here, you're leading a black blob through a series of mazes, tapping on the right side of the screen to move right and the left to move left. Push both sides at the same time and you'll move up. You will need to get your way out of different obstacles and grab as many power-ups as you can to complete the level. Overall, this is a great game that has surpassed its predecessor. Next is Asphalt Airborne. Unless you have been living under a rock, there is no way you wouldn't have heard of the Asphalt series. This game is graphically intensive and heats up almost every phone while playing. Even though the game is power hungry, the Note 7 managed to run this game smoothly without heating too much and losing too much battery which proves that the Note 7 is a beast. Next up is Alto's Adventure. In this game, you're sliding down a randomly generated mountain slide, tapping the screen to jump, and holding your finger down to flip in the air. Your purpose in this game is to rescue runaway llamas along the way. The animations in this game are very smooth and the soundtrack is very nice as well. All in all, Alto's Adventure creates a soothing comprehensive experience that feels like more than simply a game. Next, we have Sky Force Reloaded. If you love playing top-down shooter games, this is the one you're looking for on Android. If you are new to this genre, well, you just drag your plane around the screen shooting everything. Sky Force Reloaded has kept its feature to rescue human survivors like its predecessor and made the game a bit difficult, as you have to stand still to save the survivors in the war zone where you are already trying your best to dodge the bullets, missiles and many obstacles. The visuals have gotten an upgrade and more customization can now be done on your plane. Next, Dream League 2016. Dream League 2016 is a very good football game that looks somewhat like an older FIFA game, but the controls are good and the load time between matches are lightning quick. All in all, it is a great free game. Next, we have Implosion. The game sees you playing a mech-suited human stomping through a post-apocalyptic wasteland. You have got a big sword, a gun, and the ability to slide out of the way if any of the slobbering mutants gets too close. Although the gameplay is not quite original, the graphics and controls are amazing. Up next is Mechorama. This is a very well executed puzzle game where your purpose is to guide a charming robot to its destination. The game also comes with a level editor that you can use to make new levels. All in all, it is a great game that is visually pleasing, challenging and is really fun to play. Next is Hyper Burner. In this game, you control a small spaceship by dragging a thumb around the screen and you need to reach the end without crashing. The controls are quite easy and the graphics and visuals are amazing. All in all, it is a great addictive game. Next up is Kingdom Rush. Kingdom Rush is a tower defense game with some amazing tweaks. The graphics look great and the controls are easily understandable. There are about 20 levels to begin with, each fairly distinct in theme, enemy type and path arrangement and it also has adjustable difficulty settings. Overall, it is one of the best tower defense game I have ever played. Next, we have Counter Spy. Counter Spy mixes classic side-scrolling with a cover system popularized by Gears of War. The graphics look a little rectangular, but it does look good and the animations are fluid. Although the controls are a little buggy, the gameplay compensates for that. Up 
up next is Xenowork. This game requires you to complete a set of objectives like killing enemies, killing bosses and activating switches. The controls are smooth and the graphics is great. With the semi top down gameplay, this game runs smoothly and is very fun to play on the big screen of the Note 7. Next, we have Gangster Vegas. This game is a lot like Grand Theft Auto, but graphically the game is well done. The characters all have unique faces and bodies, and the attention to detail is pretty nice. This game is fully voice acted, and it also has a fairly good story. Overall, it is a very good replacement for GTA. Coming up next is Valiant Hearts. Valiant Hearts is a puzzle or adventure game that is mostly narrative. Its puzzles aren't particularly mind-bending and are instead used to illustrate the drudgery and insidiousness of life in the trenches. There are some mini-games that coincide with the story and that makes the gameplay more amusing. And finally, The End of the World. The End of the World is a side-scrolling and a mobile story-driven game. The controls here are pretty easy, as you have to use the bottom corners of the screen to walk either left or right and you can simply touch to interact with the surrounding. This game caught my eye with its art style and smooth animation. Well, that was it for this video guys. Leave a thumbs up down below if you found the video nice. Subscribe for more and as always thanks for watching and you guys have a great day.